Okay, so while watching the GNOME's 44 announcement, I thought that it's pretty funny to think that they deliver a lot of things that I think would improve the KD world too. As an example, I will talk about the settings because GNOME did improve them a lot and it's something that KD is working on by itself. I'll also talk about the quick settings, which I would love to see implemented in KD Plasma, but again, we'll talk about that. And it's a pretty complex story actually. And finally, I'll talk about the app ecosystem that GNOME managed to, you know, bring up and build, which is something that I think KD would need. And I think that it's very interesting to see what approach GNOME choose for doing so. So let's start off with settings. And the first page that GNOME introduced in 44 is device security, which is a feature that actually KD lacks entirely. So now with GNOME 44, it's much easier to see what's happening. You have this checks failed and checks passed uh, texts to tell you, yes, everything fine or everything is not fine. And you have this simple design with big green buttons if everything is going well and red, buns, red buttons, I guess, if it's not. You can also generate a full security report that you can just copy paste around and, you know, upload to the bug tricker if anything is going wrong, as an example. And then we have accessibility, the system settings accessibility page, which is also something that KDE is really working on. In fact, we did an election within KDE and we elected accessibility as a main goal of the entirety of the community, which is pretty interesting. We do have some new features in GNOME 44 that KDE already exposes nicely as an example over amplification. That is basically whenever you go into the audio applet, you're able to um, change the volume up to 150%, which allows you to actually hear if some audio is too low on the Oh, audio. Yeah. Now GNOME has that feature too, but it's still a bit hidden in the volume settings. So I'm still not too happy about that. But also in this new update, we have the option to enable accessibility features using shortcuts, a test area for the cursor blinking settings, and a new setting to make scroll bars always visible. And by the way, we do that for exactly the re this reason. We always make scroll bars visible because it's a very important accessibility thing that shouldn't be disabled by default. Then we have a redesign of the sound system settings, which now better exposes the most important things, hiding the less interesting stuff. For comparison, this is the KD sound settings page. And as much as I love the volume applet, this page is uh, a bit scary to say the least. Volume controls are now in a sub page in GNOME. As mentioned, you can also disable the alert sound and there is now a window to select them from. Finally, the sound test window was also redesigned, which should in theory eliminate the scaling issues, which I totally know about because I use GNOME in my daily life, right? <laughs> scaling issues. Then there is the mouse and touchpad settings page with videos to demonstrate options, which is something almost unheard of in the KD land, but I'd love to see more of that. In fact, there is something similar that's coming to the panel settings and if it lands, and that's a big if, obviously that would be awesome. You will have in the panel settings some uh, pictures which will help you explain what each settings for the panel does. That would be honestly awesome and I think we should start doing that also in other system settings pages. Okay, so what else in GNOME 44? The new testing window, the new mouse acceleration settings, and there is tick marks in sliders. So when you, you know, slide the sliders, you've got tick marks underneath them. Which brings me to quick settings, which is also quite an important section. This is very, very subjective, but I would love to see quick settings in KD as well. It is on my to-do list, but it's been there since uh, years ago. So uh, there's also been many discussions on whether and how they should be implemented. We have many developers not quite liking the idea, but there is some agreement that if properly implemented in the system trace status dialog, it could be interesting. Oh, wait. This is interesting. 
So the idea is you go into the system tray, you click the last button of the system tray, which is the arrow up. And then usually right now you just have icons of the hidden things. And instead my idea is let's put there all the quick settings. That would be pretty cool, I think. And then we could make it a setting that wherever in the system tray you click, it still opens the quick settings, which is what uh, somebody does. Somebody. In GNOME 44, the Bluetooth quick settings has a menu that allows you to uh, manage connected devices. And also there are background apps, which is open apps without a window. This is also a settings that as far as I know, KD does not have at all. And you know, it's, it seems useful. So why not? Why not? Now each quick setting has a short description of it, which is surely immediately useful to tell the user what each, each thing does, but also it allows you to put there the status of each setting. As an example, you might have Bluetooth and then underneath it, the little text connected, which is also pretty useful. Which brings me to the sixth part of this video, which is Circle Members. And in fact, the Circle initiative from GNOME is something that I totally envy of. It allows a sort of onboard third-party apps, making sure that they follow GNOME design and giving them infrastructure to develop, but without the need for those apps to become full citizens of GNOME, which would have much more responsibilities. In fact, it's sometimes very hard in the KD world to go to an application and convince them to join KDE because, you know, that's joining KDE and that, yes, brings some benefits but also some responsibilities and maybe not every app developer likes KDE that much. I know it's hard to believe. But with GNOME, there is this GNOME circle which is not GNOME. It's like not first-party app, not third-party apps, but it's apps that totally feel first-party. And I, I think that's actually a great idea and it works really well. In fact, since GNOME 43, there are 10 new applications, which is a lot, given that it's 10 new apps consistent with GNOME style and everything. It really shows that this helps to grow a great ecosystem around them. Very quickly, the apps are Firstly, Zap, which lets you create a list of sounds and play them. Then there is Botswain to control and set up the Elgato Stream decks. Emblem to um, generate avatars given an icon and a set of colors or gradients. Lorem, which generates the Lorem Ipsums, Ipsum text. Workbench with real-time JTK preview and support for Blueprint for the UI, which is kind of like QML in KD, but for GNOME and a lot of the cool GNOME ID stuff. There is Komiku to read manga. Chess Clock, which is, uh, you guessed it, a customizable chess clock. Eyedropper to pick colors from the screen and even generate a new palette. Elastic to design and export spring physics-based animations. The UI is so cool though and Clairvoria, Clairvoria, why, why did you give it that name? Clairvoyant, a eight ball fortune teller. And that was it, like, okay, there is more stuff in an announcement. As an example, GNOME 44 does have thumbnails in the file picker, which is amazing and of course kind of raises the question of just just now. <laughs> and it is something that KD ha already has, but still the major new features, the new system settings, the improved quick settings, the new circle apps, I think I actually envy those. And it's not like KD isn't doing anything either though. And in fact, I do have the hope that the next KD Plasma version, which is KD Plasma 6, will bring many, 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 many improvements in those regards. So I had to say this last sentence, otherwise it might feel that I prefer GNOME to KD, which uh, obviously cannot be the case. So don't, don't worry, I'm, I'm still a KD person, but you know, GNOME 44, Yes, it's, it's not GNOME 40, but it's nonetheless a pretty cool update.